This video is brought to you by Dashlane. Get a free 30 day trial of Dashlane Premium by going to dashlane.com slash feature history. Hello and welcome to Featurette, which is not a series about me cross-dressing, but instead a series to highlight topics that I couldn't really make a full 10 minute video about. So in this episode, we'll be featuretting, featuretting, featuring the evolution of military vehicles. There's not many things as iconic about an army than its patrol vehicle, personnel transport and small load carrier. They're the natural evolution of the warhorse, nimble but tough, taking men in their arms further than they could ever go. But the machines that take on these tasks have been rapidly changing since their inception in the early 20th century. They've improved and adapted a lot according to the armies that needed them and the companies that built them. To really explain modern military four-wheel drives, we have to go back all the way to when they didn't even have four wheels. In 1905, the French Adolphe Cogres would move to Russia, and working for Tsar Nicholas II, designed the half-track in nine years. Both civilian and military vehicles were converted to Cogres's half-track, and it was one of the earliest breakthroughs in bringing cars off the road. The design was used in World War I and was developed further after, leaving many half-tracks ready to deploy by the outbreak of the Second World War. However, the half-track quickly became outdated, as alongside its development there had also been advancement in tyre treading. Treads became more sophisticated and the off-road tyre, with its wide and aggressive patterns, came onto the market. Tyres were cheaper, faster, lighter and easier to control, but they compromised on off-road ability. Tracks were still the go-to for heavy armoured vehicles, but rough terrain tyres opened the possibility of having small, nimble off-roaders. The Germans would be the first to jump on the opportunity, entering the Kubelwagen into service in 1940. The car was definitely adequate in some rough terrain, but it was significantly hampered by the fact it was actually just two-wheel drive. The US began production on its own off-roader in 1941. The Willy MB, or Ford GPW, or sometimes it was a Bantam. No matter who produced them, we all know them as the Jeep. The vehicle was lightweight, low with a high clearance, fast and most importantly, four-wheel drive. The US would produce over half a million Jeeps, and all the Allies were quick to buy them up or knock them off. World War II ended in Allied, and therefore, Jeep victory. It planted itself as the off-road design, spawning many imitators and innovators. The surplus of Jeeps were sold on the civilian market after the war and were quickly bought up. When the Jeeps sold out, companies began to develop four-wheel drives commercially. Japan's Toyota Land Cruisers and Nissan Patrols, the UK's Land Rover series, and of course the US's own Willy Jeep CJs, they were all inspired by the design and success of the military Jeep. While none of these vehicles were initially designed for military use, they could and would be used by armed forces across the world. However, as the Cold War quietly raged on, it began to become clear that the Jeep and its equivalents had aged. The Soviets would be the first to update in the 70s, saying goodbye to the Gaz 67 and hello to the UAZ 469, which really wasn't too different actually. It would once again take the US to step into brave new territory, when they ditched the Jeep in the 80s for the high mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicle, or Humvee if you like. Like the Jeep, it was designed from the ground up to be military, but unlike the Jeep, it was bigger, tougher, carried more, and could go further. It was perfect for carrying out logistics and rough terrain, and served that role perfectly in the highly televised Gulf War. The world saw the future of personnel and light gear transport, and its iconic look even lent itself to a civilian version. However, the future proved to be short-lived. Entering the 21st century, the Humvee found itself on the front lines in Iraq and Afghanistan, and the unarmoured vehicle wasn't designed to take the gunfire and IEDs that were all too common. As casualties mounted, the army attempted to up-armour the Humvee, but the extra weight killed carrying an off-road performance, and compromising between armour and performance left the Humvee with the worst of both. It was given the shortcomings of vehicles like the Humvee, and even older Land Rovers and UAZs, 
that countries began to push for mine and ambush resistant vehicles, MRAPs. Enter heavy armoured vehicles like the US's Cougar, Russia's Gaz Tiger, Germany's ATF Dingo and a whole heap of others. These vehicles boasted protection and combat readiness, but their huge size and weights made them too awkward to ever be a direct replacement for classic military 4x4s. Instead, the old cars were relegated to backline duty, but it seems like they may be on the way out for good. In June of this year, the US has entered full production on their Humvee replacement, the JLTV. The Joint Light Tactical Vehicle promises to serve as a relatively light off-road personnel carrier with greater payload and survivability than its predecessors. With a smaller frame than most other armoured vehicles, it can also be easily shipped to theatres across the world. So today, in 2019, staring into a future of fully armoured and classified military 4x4s, it seems that the crossover between civilian and military cars is fading away. The beautiful simplicity of 20th century four-wheel drives just doesn't really happen anymore. New military vehicles are all about being specialised and armoured, and new civilian SUVs are luxury money sinks. So if you don't mind me, I think I'm going to hold onto my car that's five years older than myself. Because in these old four-wheel drives, with their boxy designs, reliable parts and simple fixes, you can take them to war and back. However, before you go putting thousands into buying old military vehicles for security, perhaps you should be thinking about your internet security. Dashlane is the perfect tool for making the internet safer and more convenient. Dashlane hides your internet browsing, generates secure passwords, autofills those passwords, monitors for data breaches, and lots more across all your devices. So unlike VPNs that offer privacy and password managers that offer convenience, Dashlane is one product that does it all. You can head over right now to dashlane.com slash history and get a complete free 30-day trial of their premium service. It's time to get serious about your internet security, especially if you don't want your personal use military drone to get hacked anytime soon.